Welcome to the Antibiotic Zone of Inhibition Virtual Laboratory. Alexander Fleming discovered penicillin in 1928. Alexander Fleming returned to his research laboratory at St. Mary's Hospital in London after World War I. His battlefront experience had shown him how serious a killer bacteria could be, much worse than even an enemy artillery. He wanted to find a chemical that could stop bacterial infection. Fleming had so much going on in his laboratory that it was often a mess. This disorder proved to be very fortunate, however. In 1928, he was straightening up a pile of petri dishes where he had been growing bacteria, but which had been piled in the sink. He opened each one and examined it before tossing it into the cleaning solution. One made him stop and think, hmm, that's funny. Some mold was growing on one of the dishes. Not too unusual, but what was unusual is he noticed that all around the mold, the Staphylococcus bacteria had been killed. He took a sample of the mold and found that it was from the Penicillium family, later specified as Penicillium notanum. Bacteria are prokaryotic single-celled organisms. Individual bacterial cells are visible with the aid of high-powered microscopes. Under proper nutritional and environmental conditions, bacteria can be controlled in a laboratory setting. They are usually cultivated in sterile petri dishes containing a gelatin-like nutrient called auger. Bacteria reproduce very rapidly. Each single cell divides about every 20 minutes. When a population of bacteria has multiplied to a thousand or more cells, a pattern of growth called a colony can be seen with the naked eye. The species, shape, and color of bacteria colony can be used to identify the species of bacteria that form it. Bacteria are very important in many ways. Some bacteria break down organic material from dead organisms and wastes, returning nutrients to the environment. Nitrogen-fixing bacteria convert nitrogen gas from the air into forms of nitrogen that can be used by plants and animals. Some bacteria are used for making food, such as vinegar, yogurt, butter, cheese, pickles, and sauerkraut. A few bacteria call disease. These are known as pathogens. Some examples of diseases caused by bacteria include tuberculosis, pneumonia, strep throat, and ear infections. Because bacteria multiply so rapidly, it is often necessary to control their growth in the human body, in food, and in the kitchen. Several varieties of products are used to control bacterial growth, including antibiotics, disinfectants, and antiseptics. All these products are antimicrobial agents. Different kinds of bacteria are sensitive to some chemicals and insensitive to others. Thus, different types of antimicrobial agents vary in the way they affect bacterial growth. In this laboratory, you will determine the effectiveness of different antimicrobial agents by inoculating antimicrobial agar in a petri dish with different pathogenic bacteria, adding various antimicrobial agents, and then measuring the bacterial growth around each antimicrobial agent. The objectives of this laboratory are to first describe how bacterial cultures are grown and investigated in the laboratory, and second to determine the effectiveness of antibiotics and antiseptics in inhibiting the growth of bacterial cultures. Let's look at our procedure. First, we will inoculate the agar in the petri dishes by clicking one of the test tubes containing pathogenic bacteria. We have the choice of Staphylococcus aureus, Haemophilus influenzae, or Streptococcus pneumoniae. Step two, vials number one through seven contain filter discs that have been soaked in various antimicrobial agents such as antibacterial soap, household bleach, household disinfectant, penicillin, amoxicillin, and erythromycin, or sterile water, used as a control. After inoculating the agar in the petri dish, we will drag a disc from each of our vials and place it on the petri dish. In order to avoid contamination, these discs should not be moved after they have been dropped into the petri dish. Next, we click on the incubator to place the petri dish into it, and click the red button of the incubator to turn it on. We will incubate for 24 hours. We can click again to remove the petri dish from the incubator. Next, we will examine the patterns of bacterial growth. The colored area that covers most of the surface of the petri dish 
is called the lawn culture of the bacteria. This is the visible layer of thousands of bacterial cells that are growing together. We will use our ruler to measure the diameter of the zones of inhibition around each disc. These are seen as the tan areas. Some discs may be surrounded by a large zone of inhibition where no bacteria grew due to strong inhibitory effect of the antibiotic, antiseptic, or disinfectant on the disc. Other discs may have caused little or no inhibition. This means that the bacteria are partially or completely resistant to the antimicrobial agent that is put upon them. To find out which antimicrobial agent responds to a specific number, move the cursor over the number, use the table provided to keep track of your measurements for each antimicrobial agent by recording the zone of inhibition in millimeters. When we are done with each bacteria, we can click the reset button. Once we have gathered all of our data, we can use the data in the data table to compare the effectiveness of different antimicrobial agents on different bacteria. Be sure to complete the journal questions and be prepared to upload your data table for your instructor to grade. Penicillin. Penicillin is the first antibiotic ever discovered. It was produced by an airborne mold called Penicillin notatum. Penicillin is a weapon against deadly diseases such as bacterial pneumonia and meningitis. Amoxicillin. Amoxicillin is a derivative of the antibiotic penicillin. It inhibits a different range of bacteria than penicillin does, and amoxicillin is often absorbed better in the stomachs of patients than penicillin. Erythromycin. Erythromycin is an antibiotic that inhibits protein synthesis on the ribosomes of a wide variety of bacteria. Erythromycin is used on patients who have an allergy to penicillin. The sterile filter paper discs are used as a control. Household bleach, household disinfectant, and antibacterial soaps. These are all chemical agents designed to kill bacteria. These substances create adverse environmental conditions for bacterial growth. Hemophilus influenzae is a pathogenic bacteria that causes ear infections and can lead to meningitis in children under four years of age. Staphylococcus aureus. Staphylococcus aureus is a pathogenic bacteria. It causes superficial and deep abscesses, wound infection, infection of various internal organs, and can lead to sepsis of the blood and death. Staphylococcus aureus causes food poisoning and toxic shock syndromes. It is also the principal cause of cow mastasis, which affects domestic cows. Staphylococcus pneumoniae. Staphylococcus pneumoniae causes pneumococcal pneumonia. Staphylococcus pneumoniae are spherical cells that are arranged in chains. Interestingly, it was the Staphylococcus pneumoniae that was the organism in which DNA was first discovered. Let's start our experiment. Let's start with Staphylococcus aureus. We will begin by inoculating the auger on our Petri dish. You'll want to make sure that the entire Petri dish is covered with Staphylococcus aureus. Next, we can place our discs. Disc one is used as a negative control. It is simply the filter disc placed in water, which should have no antimicrobial effectiveness. Disc number two contains antibacterial soap. The disc from three contains household bleach. Disc four is going to contain household disinfectant. The disc from container five contains penicillin. The disc from container six will contain amoxicillin. And the disc from container number seven will contain erythromycin. Now we will incubate the Petri dish. After 24 hours, we can remove our Petri plate and measure the zones of inhibition. There is no zone of inhibition for number one, which is our negative control, so that's good. For number two, in order to measure the zone of inhibition, we will want to take the measurement that is the diameter of the circle of the zone of inhibition. Be sure to write down and record in your laboratory table the zone of inhibition for each type of bacteria and each type of disinfectant or antimicrobial agent. Here's the zone of inhibition for disc number three, the zone of inhibition for disc number four, the zone of inhibition for number five, the zone of inhibition for number six, and finally, for number seven. Now we reset our experiment 
and try Haemophilus influenzae. Let's inoculate our plates. And add our discs. Now we're going to incubate our Petri plate for 24 hours. Let's measure our zones of inhibition. Our control does not have a zone of inhibition, so this is good. Now that we have our zones of inhibition for each of the antimicrobial substances, we can try our last bacteria. The last bacterial specimen is Streptococcus pneumonia. Now we can add our disc. Now we're going to incubate our specimens for 24 hours. Let's check our zones of inhibition. We see our control is good because it does not have a zone of inhibition. Now that you have all of your data, you can work on answering the laboratory questions. Thank you for watching and happy learning.